Hey guys, welcome back to the Fabrizi channel. So we're going to make a two-part video on how to make a load balancer in Golang. This is a supplementary video on the Net HTTP package. The Net HTTP package is very popular. You'll use it a lot to make APIs, web servers. Uh, so we're going to go over how to make handler functions, implement the handler interface. We're going to go over how to configure your server, make the routes. So if you're interested in getting familiar with this package, keep watching. Okay guys, so we can go ahead and open up our Visual Studio code or whatever editor you use. Uh, and we're starting off with an empty main.go uh, file. And we're going to import that HTTP package inside of our file. And now the first thing we're going to go over is how to make a server. So let's just say server here. And we're going to go ahead and make the server. People usually call it S or server. It's fine as well. And we're going to use the server struct from the HTTP package. And now this struct here uh, accepts two things. If you go hover over it, we can see it accepts an address and a handler. Now the address is a port that you want to want to use for your server. In this case, we can go ahead and make it be port 8080. It's a very common port for web servers. And then uh, additionally, we can make a handler. Right now, we don't have a handler. We're going to touch on that a little later. But we can write nil for now. And now we can go ahead and run the server by doing server.listen and serve. And there you go, we have the server running. However, it's not going to do anything. Uh, there's no logic and there's nothing, there's no content being provided to the client with the server. It's just going to run a process on this port. It's going to occupy this port. It's going to run a hanging process and it's not going to do anything. So that's not, that's not useful yet. Now, the way we want it to be useful is we introduce a handler. Now, uh, a handler, if you guys can see right here, let's go to the documentation. Uh, if we can go to the handler uh, struct or interface. So this is the handler interface, okay? Let me zoom in up on it. Uh, all that it requires is for an object to implement this function, serve HTTP. If any object or struct implements this, then that means it's good to go to be a handler. Uh, that means it's part of the interface, meaning it could be used within your server. So let's just go ahead and put this on the right, and let's code up on the left. Now, let's go, I think we lost it here. Uh, serve HTTP, okay. Alright, so here we can make any um, object. Uh, for instance, let's make a welcome message. Welcome. We can make it a string, it's fine. So we make our own type, and this is going to have a method receiver of serve HTTP. So we can say func. Here we can say w for welcome. And we can say serve HTTP. And the method signature has to match, right? So it has to have a response writer and it has to have a request. So usually you see uh, W for response writer. We got to do HTTP response writer. And then R for the pointer to the HTTP that request. Okay. Uh, this will throw an error because W for welcome is matching the same for response writer, so we can just make this WC. Um, okay, so in here we can actually write our logic, right? So we can say fmtf print f, and now if we look at here, what it does, it accepts a writer, uh, and then it just writes to whatever string that we give it. So we can put in W here. Why W? Because it's our response writer, and we can just go ahead and say hello. Where we can say welcome to our server. All right. Now, to put now now since this has a serve HTTP function as part of its, um, you know, methods, we can actually say that it implements the handler interface. So if we go ahead and make an instantiate a welcome object here, we can say uh, let's see handler. We could go ahead and just say uh, wc is equal to, um, you can do it this way, right? We can just say welcome and give it a string. 
of some sort. We can do that. Uh, however, we don't really need to do that. Uh, more simpler ways to do var wc welcome. Since we don't really want to give it a string value. Um, and this could be string, it could be int, it could be whatever. And now that we have this instantiated, we can use it as our handler. So we can say wc, and there we go. So if we run this here, we have finally have a handler to handle some type of content for our uh, server. So if we go to localhost, port 8080, we're gonna get welcome to our server. So there we go. Uh, that's the that's how to make a server and how to make a handler and how to make an object implement the handler interface. Uh, however, what if we wanted to make some more routes? For instance, what if we wanted to have like a login route? You know, uh, like a a logout route. We want more endpoints to our server. So to do this, uh, we have to introduce something called a server multiplexer. And most people call this a router, uh, so we're just going to call it a router. But what we're going to name it, or what it's called in the HTTP package, is um, a mux. Mux. So let's go ahead and say router is h equal to HTTP dot new serve mux. Now mux is short for multiplexer, I believe. And what this is going to do is allow you to make routes to your server. So instead of actually using this handler, uh, we don't want to do that. Instead, we want to use the router as our handler. Okay, and that doesn't mean this is useless. Our handler for our welcome is still it could be used, uh, but this time it's going to be used within our router and not directly our server. So we can say router dot handle, and we can put in uh, wc in there since it is a handler. We got to give it, of course, a route now. So this handle function accepts a pattern, which is going to be the endpoint, um, and then a handler. So that's why it works. So that is how do you use your handler within your router. It's pretty cool. But now we wanted to make that login and that logout endpoint. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now we're going to look into handler funks. So let's just go ahead write that down handler funks now we can use our router again do router handle func and within here we'll specify the endpoint so we can say logout and now here is where we're actually going to make our function that was going to handle uh, the route uh, you guys might be wondering what a multiplexer is um, a server multiplexer is the same thing as a router what it does is it matches uh, a pattern which is this endpoint right here to a function that is going to handle the logic for that specific endpoint uh, here we can see that this accepts this function signature which is exactly like our surge HTTP function for our handler uh, now it's just convert it into our handler function. Uh, so now let's go ahead and write the logic. Uh, we're just going to make it simple, right? For the case of practicality, we're not making this um, too long. We just want you guys to be familiar with the package. So this is going to just say uh, logout page. Okay. And we can also do it another way. So here we're making an anon anonymous function, right? So now we can also do um, a function outside of our main. We can say function or func logout, and it's going to take this exact signature here w for response writer and r for the pointer to the HTTP request. And here we can go ahead and just write the logic that we want. And this is going to be a login. And now to actually put that into our router, we'll just say router the handle func. We'll give it the endpoint. And we'll just go ahead and say login. Oh, uh, this should be login. Apologies. Okay. There we go. Now let's go ahead and run this.
So this is going to be log logout page, and now this is going to be the login page. All right, so hopefully that was a nice little introduction to the net HTTP package. Up next is how to handle JSON and how to you know return uh, JSON bodies to the client, uh, so that we can make an API. So that's going to be next. So stay tuned, guys. Be right.